Hell of a thing. I'm I'm convinced more than ever now that Don Lemon knew exactly what the hell he was doing. Uh, let me take you to the first video. Here it is. This is a part of the conversation with Musk where you ask him about hate speech. Here it is. Hate speech on the platform is up. Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? That you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the Great Replacement Theory as it relates I to I don't Democrats, have to answer these questions. The Great Replacement Theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that? I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would not do interview with this interview. So you don't think, that you, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm or criticized that constantly, I could care less. I'm criticized constantly, I could care less. Put up Don Lemon for a mass here. You know, when Don Lemon went live and said, "Oh my goodness, Elon Musk is mad at me, y'all. All I did was ask regular questions and he got upset. I thought we had a great interview. Don, I saw the interview, sir. There's no in the hell you thought. That at the end of that interview, <laughs> you still had a job at X. I love it though. I mean, it was beautifully done. But sir, you knew good and damn well you needed to own the license to that interview, and you did. All right, per the Daily Beast, Don Lemon fired back at Elon Musk on Sunday, one day after the tech billionaire compared him to um, Verica Salt for complaining about the now defunct deal with X. In an exclusive interview with people, Lemon ripped into Musk. Uh, his persona saying that the Tesla owner could not handle being asked to own up to past mistakes. People said, um, question, did you have any qualms about joining forces with Elon Musk and X, the platform? And Musk has a reputation for intolerance, anti-Semitism, transphobia, not the most accepting culture limit. I disagree, quite frankly, with most of what Elon Musk tweets about and talks about. But he owns X and is one of the biggest social media and information platforms in the world. I thought it was the best opportunity to reach the biggest audience, audience so that people could see the work that I'm doing. Also, unlike Elon Musk, truly believe in freedom of speech. Now, I want to say this. Don Lemon does, in fact, nod. He gives a nod to those who said, uh, Don, don't do it. Don, it won't last. Don, this is a bad look. All right, so he acknowledges that he saw all of these messages from individuals who said this is not going to work out well. But he countered with, I'm simply going where the platform can be echoed. All right, so people pose the question, why did you choose Musk for the first show? All right, uh, Don Lemon said, uh, as the show came into fruition, we started to think about guests. I said, who would be the best guest for the first show? Who would be the most impactful? And I said, I think that would be Elon Musk. Because this show is going to be about true freedom of speech. And it's going to be a global town hall for everyone. Elon Musk would be the best person. We reached out to him. He said yes, willingly. And the rest is history. So then people said, you certainly have an idea that it could fall apart. Lemon, the possibility of Elon Musk being unpredictable and erratic. Yeah, of course I knew that. I went into this with my eyes open. I've interviewed many world leaders, presidents, the convicts, and no one has been more sensitive or touchy than Elon Musk. And during the interview and during other interviews, he constantly says he doesn't care what people write or say about him. For someone who doesn't care about what people write or say about him, he sure does care about what people write or say about him, end quote. Lemon continued, he's not used to being held account to account. He's not used to having to answer to anyone, especially someone like me who doesn't share his worldview and doesn't look like him. You know what I'm saying? When I questioned him about things that he put out on social media, posted or tweeted that weren't factual, it was very uncomfortable for him to the point to where he and his team wanted to see the interview before it aired, which was a big capital N O. People post the question, what did you want to happen with this interview? Some people would say 
don't give him the airtime, even more of an audience. So let me say my philosophy. Then when I was in cable was that no one ever wins a cable news argument. I just wanted us both to be authentic. There was so much to get out of the way. Why did you tweet this about black people? Why did you say this about DEI? Why did you say this about a woman pilot? Why did you say this about Jewish people? I had to know that and the audience needs to know that. And for him to think that wasn't going to happen, that was really naive if he thought that. And I agree with him. Lemon said he's a very consequential person to the world. He controls the satellites, electric cars, the auto industry, rockets, space, and one of the biggest information platforms in the world. I learned a lot about him and I think he learned a lot about me. Well, he could have, but I think it just went right over his head. And people pose the question, what is the state of your relationship with Musk now? Lemon, our business relationship is over, so I'll move on from there. Uh, the Don Lemon Show premiered today on YouTube, his first interview guest being Elon Musk. But in other Musk related news, Tesla has settled a racist discrimination lawsuit in which a federal jury previously awarded $3.2 million in damages to someone named Owen Diaz, a black man who worked as an elevator operator at its Fremont, California factory in 2015. Um, so let me say a couple of things. Don Lemon was posing questions that Elon is dealing with today. These are not uh, old questions or, or this is not old news. These things are happening now. Also, I think Don Lemon has done something quite remarkable. We have to stop for a moment to understand this. Out of everyone who has ever interviewed Elon Musk, Don Lemon has been able to get the absolute most out of Elon Musk than anybody else who has ever interviewed him, in my opinion. And I think it is because of the quagmire that Elon Musk was in. On one hand, you're offended by the questions because of your own internal belief in your supremacy. On the other hand, Elon Musk, you are the one who agreed to all of it, including hiring Don Lemon for the distribution deal. So you can't just walk out of the interview like you have with others. It makes you seem, well, small. But instead, you decide to utilize the amazing power of your platform in order to discontinue the distribution deal. Per CNBC in 2023, Diaz testified in a San Francisco federal court that colleagues at Tesla use racist epithets, made him feel physically unsafe, told him to go back to Africa and left racist graffiti in restrooms. Colleagues also left in his workspace a racist drawing referencing um, a caveman in 1950 era cartoon whose main character is a black child portrayed with large lips wearing a loincloth, earrings, and a bone through his hair. During his trials, Diaz even recounted he had encountered or encouraged, excuse me, his son to work at Tesla, but would later regret it because his son was also exposed to a racially hostile environment. Attorney Lawrence Oregon with the California Civil Rights Law Group who represented Diaz told CNBC via email, quote, the parties have reached an amicable resolution for their disputes. The terms of the settlement are confidential and we will, we will not have additional comment, end quote. The same firm is representing current and former Tesla employees in a proposed class action lawsuit, Marcus Vaughn, the Tesla Inc. Alleging the racist discrimination and harassment of black workers has continued at the automaker. Diaz is not part of that litigation. The US Equal Opportunity Employment Commission also sued Tesla, accusing the automaker of violating federal law by tolerating widespread and ongoing racial harassment of his black employees and by subjecting some of these workers to retaliation for opposing the harassment. Tesla has called the EECO's allegations, quote, a false narrative that ignores Tesla's track record of equal employment opportunity. All right, and this is the attitude of um, Elon Musk. We have it here. That's the way he feels about it. The settlement with Diaz comes as the Tesla CEO faces widespread criticism for his handling of hate speech on X. 
which he owns and runs as CTO. Per NBC, Musk has shared on X unverified claims of cannibalism in Haiti. This month, by the way, he said that. Another post smearing Haitian migrants as likely cannibals. Mother Jones also reported uh, he has been retweeting prominent race scientists adherence on his platform and spreading misinformation about racial minorities, intelligence, and physiology. But he's a genius, right? He's a genius. He's no genius. He's a con man, just like Donald Trump. Um, that co-founder title, if you look at the record, he sued in order to get that title affixed to him. He has no original concept. He has no original uh, proclamation or invention that he has brought that has changed or shaped the world. The only thing he has done is subscribe to an ideology of white supremacy, being offended when people challenge his insanity, and he continues to ride the wave that many ride in this country. All right, I had a thoughts here. You know, um, the reason we always hear about Elon Musk and Donald Trump is because people keep talking about them and putting their interviews up. <laughs> and I I know a lot of people in the entertainment industry, people that I've worked with, there's like this silent worship of someone who's a billionaire, who's a self-made billionaire, which most of them are not because the right. billions are poor on the backs of a lot of people who died unrecognized and uncompensated for their work. But it's interesting to me to always hear people say, well, we got to we got to hear the other side. Those people tell you who they are constantly. Elon Musk is telling you who he is constantly. And yet and still, we still want to hear from him and hear what he has to say and how he rationalizes his racism and sexism and xenophobia and the other thing I just wanted to say, those workers at Tesla, I'm so tired of people telling Black American people to go back to Africa when they were here for centuries building America. Uh, why don't you tell Elon Musk to go back to Africa? He was the one that was born there. He yeah. was born in Pretoria. Like, why you keep asking, uh, telling Black American people, they just as American as anybody else. And yes, many of us are descendants of African uh, uh, hostages that were stolen from the, the motherland and brought here against their will to do the work. But when they got here, you know what they did? They built America. Therefore, a lot of the Black people you keep telling to go back to Africa should tell you to go back to Europe because America belongs to Black people too. So stop telling Black people to go back to Africa. Yeah, it shows your true colors, no pun intended. 